Hello, this video is all about the story of our bungalow re-roofing project, which features some real highs and lows. And this video will focus mainly on the lows, to be honest, which we will get to later. First though, a bit of background. We moved into our 1930s bungalow in the summer of 2019, and we had lots of renovation work to do. We ripped out the old kitchen and put in a new one. We also ripped out the old bathroom and put in a new one. And we did lots of decorating. We knocked down a wall, we built a wall, and just generally made the place into what we wanted it to be. There were Artex ceilings in almost every room, so we had those skim plastered and we decorated those too. Now we knew all along that the roof of our bungalow wasn't in the best condition and that we'd need to replace it someday, but it wasn't until November 2021 when we noticed up in the loft that water was getting in around a flat roof. Now at this point you might be wondering why on earth have we got a flat roof on top of a pitched roof and to be honest we are wondering that too. It makes no sense to us and it made no sense to the builders who built the extension that the flat roof is on top of back in the early 90s as well. This by the way is the paperwork left to us by the previous occupants. When I went up to the top of the roof to have a look I could see a number of problems. The ridge tiles were absolutely knackered. It's an old felt roof and these are only expected to last around 20 years and this one was already nearly 30 years old and the flat roof had been built with a gradual slope to allow the rain to run out through two lead cladded openings and all of the roof tiles that were in the path of those openings were badly perished presumably because of the rainwater freezing and thawing out over the years. There were a lot of cracked and damaged roof tiles elsewhere on the roof too and while it would have been possible to replace the bad ones and put a new flat roof on, our ideal scenario was to turn the flat roof into a pitched roof and install new tiles to prevent any future problems with it and it would also give us the opportunity to replace all of the old bitumen style underfelt underneath the tiles with a modern breathable membrane which are much better because they last much longer, are more watertight and they allow water vapour from the house to evaporate through the roof. Our old bitumen roof felt was badly perished to a point where you could pretty much just poke your finger through it. Putting a new rubber EPDM roof on the flat roof and just replacing the old tile certainly would have been a much cheaper and simpler option, but as we very much see this as our forever home, we thought why not aim for our ideal scenario as long as we could afford it and then we know that the roof will certainly last the rest of our lives and probably beyond because clay roof tiles are expected to last over 60 years. Before doing anything else though, we first spoke to our neighbours and also our local planning department at the council just to check if there would be any issues with us converting the flat roof to a pitched roof. Our neighbours didn't have any concerns with what we wanted to do, so then I spoke to our local planning department and they were actually really helpful. They asked us to put together a document and some drawings showing the location of the property and how we wanted to change it. Fortunately, I have a background in computer-aided design as that's what I did for a day job for about 15 years. So I was able to do some basic architectural drawings myself once I'd re-familiarized myself with AutoCAD as it had been well over a year since I'd last used it. After sending that document and drawings through to them, when I spoke to the council for a second time, they said that there were potentially two reasons why we would require planning permission. The first being that if the newly created pitched roof exceeded the height of the original bungalow roof, and the second being if we wanted to change the color of our roof tiles from being red to any other color. They also said that if we did put in an application that it would be very likely to be approved and also that because our roof was leaking and it was in need of repair, another option would be for us to do the work and then apply for planning permission retrospectively. It's probably worth mentioning here that the planning regulations differ across the country. So if you're planning a similar project, do check with your local authority. Initially, we had hoped to change the color of our roof tiles, maybe to black or something like that, because the tiles get very dirty very quickly because we live next to a very busy road. But if changing the color of the tiles meant the difference between having to apply for planning permission and not, plus having to pay the fee for an application, which I think was around 250 pounds or thereabouts from memory, we decided that we would just be happy to stick with having red tiles. So then we focused our attention on the first issue of whether the new pitched roof would be higher than the original roof. Now, because I'd already done a drawing, I knew that the new pitched roof would be approximately the same height as the original roof. But I wanted to be 100% sure about it, so I ended up going up into the loft again and measuring the existing angles of both the original part of the roof and the extension, and I double-checked the drawing, and to me, again, it looked like it would be pretty much bang on the same height. 
So at that point we decided that to avoid the added complications and extra costs of applying for planning permission, we'd just go ahead and get some quotes for the work and we'd stick to using red tiles. And if when we built the pitched roof it happened to be higher than the original roof, then at that point we would apply for planning permission retrospectively, knowing that it was likely to be approved anyway. So we started getting quotes for the work involved. We'd need a roofing company, scaffolding, skip hire, and of course a carpenter to do the structural timber work. Certainly not something I would be comfortable doing on my own, but fortunately I am good friends with an excellent carpenter who many of you will know already, and some of you might know something about that already via my social media but more about that coming soon in a future video. We also know a builder whose work we regard really highly and he works closely with another company that do all of their roofing work. So we got a quote and we also got some tile samples. One of the samples was a close match to the original tiles that we had, but to be honest, we didn't really like the look of those tiles anyway and preferred the style of pan tiles. So we ended up choosing these clay pan tiles by Santoft. I will talk about all of the costs associated with the roofing work in a future video by the way, so stay tuned for all of that. One other thing to mention is that we are not going to be re-roofing the workshop, which is a separate outbuilding, not at this time anyway. We just can't afford to do both roofs in one go, so that will have to wait probably for many years, which means it won't match the roof of the bungalow, but that's okay. Once we had a quote we were happy with, we had a long wait ahead of us, and that's because at the time there was a six month lead time with ordering new roof tiles. We ordered them back in February, I think it was, and they were expected to arrive in July, but it actually wasn't until August when they actually arrived. Shortly after that, we had scaffolding installed around the property, and then the work began with the roofers stripping off the old roof tiles and felt ready for the new membrane and battens to be installed. Good bunch of guys, and from what I could see, they had done a really good job. As some of our old roof tiles were still in good condition, we asked the roofers to put them all aside so that we could sell them. Even though they're only worth about 25p each to a reclamation yard, I reckon there'll be at least a thousand good tiles here, plus the ridge tiles, which I think are more valuable. I think they're worth a couple of quid each. So we should be able to get a few hundred pounds for these and every little help says this work is going to cost us thousands of pounds. So I made a makeshift ramp out of a piece of plywood and some scraps of wood so that we could sort out all of the good tiles from the bad and pile them up ready to sell them on. I actually quite enjoy doing boring, monotonous jobs like this, but I can't say the same for my wife, who is the one reluctantly sliding the tiles down to me. Everything seemed to be progressing well right up until a point when my wife and I were away for four days to spend time with family in a caravan in sunny Skegness. We'd arranged our cat sitter to go in a couple of times a day to look after our boy Mickey. While we were away and a couple of days into our stay, we got a call from her to say that she had noticed some water on both our bathroom and our utility room floor and that it looked like water was getting in through the roof. Little did we know at this point that that leak was actually the least of our problems. So I called our roofer and he managed to get over here pretty quickly, mainly because a lot more rain was expected over the next day or two. He found the problem, which was that the roof membrane above the bathroom hadn't been pulled tight at the bottom and it had dropped inside the fascia. So he pulled it tight and said he'd sorted it out. A couple of days later, when we were driving home from Skegness, we experienced extremely heavy rainfall on the way home. And as I was driving, I was thinking to myself, I hope everything's okay at home. When we finally got home, I opened the bathroom door and everything looked dry. I couldn't see any problems. Then I went into the utility room and I could see where water had been coming in a few days prior, as I could see some water stains on the ceiling and the seam between two sheets of plywood had cracked, but it didn't look like any more water had gotten in since the roofer had made good. It wasn't until a little bit later in the day when I sat down on the sofa in our living room and looked up that I noticed this. And a little while later, this crack appeared. Our cat sitter hadn't been into this room, so she wouldn't have noticed it. Here's the devastating moment when I went up into the loft. I had only just recently put in a lot of this insulation to our loft a few months ago and it was absolutely drenched. I had to put all of the wet insulation into buckets and just throw it away. And I peeled back all of the damp insulation in the hope that in time it will dry out along with the plasterboard too. 
As for the ceiling, it was sagging where it was soaking wet. It's all going to need to be repaired. I'm not sure whether I'll be doing that myself, as I'm still in discussions with my roofer about how to resolve the issue. It wasn't just the ceiling either, because I can see the route that water has been trickling down into the walls as well, and the paint on the walls is bubbling. Water will always find its way down one way or another. So basically what had happened is that because the flat roof was sloped down to one side and the membrane hadn't been secured properly underneath the old roof felt on the flat roof, all of the water just poured into the loft and it was still pouring in too because it was still raining outside. I'll never forget that evening spent on the sofa with drips of water coming down onto our legs. To be fair to my roofer, who's a really nice bloke by the way, he's apologised for the mistake which one of his lads had made and he said that he's going to either sort it out himself or compensate us so it will get sorted. But in the meantime we have a horrible damp smell in the living room, lots of ugly water stains and a big crack and we can't do anything about it until it fully dries out. These things happen but obviously it doesn't make it any less upsetting. Anyway, this was the real low point in the story of our re-roofing project and things are going to get a lot better from here. And if this video represents a nightmare, the next is going to be about dreams coming true. Please subscribe for more and thanks for watching.